I think it's marvelous, the creation in the early 20th century of the nine lessons and carols and, and how that was developed by Eric Milner White and, and, and has carried on. Choir services towards Christmas are now bigger and more important than ever they have been as a matter of practice. I love the ninth lesson, obviously. Uh, the prologue to St. John's Gospel is, is so powerful and so extraordinary. The choir's work is firmly grounded in the liturgy. The liturgy forms the backbone of, of all of our activities, and this is our second disc uh, in hopefully a long series of liturgically structured CDs. And to be able to come back together in the format of a, a carol service at a time when we are sort of recreating a sense that the church is absolutely full to the rafters um, is of course incredibly uh, exciting and represents such a departure from the past 18 months of restrictions on any such gathering, on those things which really, really uh, define senses of community and belonging. I don't think we're looking towards the end of church music or the, or the end of the church. I, I think there will be a revival in practice. I think quite a lot of people are quite nervous. Quite a lot of people who would normally go to church are probably watching it on screen. And I think that that may continue for a bit, but I think gradually they'll come back. Music is really, really important to lots and lots of people. And lots of good things have been happening uh, during the sort of lockdown, despite the fact that a lot of parish churches haven't had their full choirs. All of this music gains far greater meaning when it is performed in the context uh, for which it is written. In particular, all of these carols are linked to the readings, um, and so the readings match uh, what's being sung, um, and the, the music therefore has a duty to provide moments of reflection, which uh, quite simply aren't there without having the readings in place. People, as a result of the pandemic, have got a completely different perspective on their lives. And I think the arts can have a really important role in that, both in giving people opportunities to go out and be together. But I also suspect that people have probably indulged in the arts at home uh, during the course of the pandemic and really now want to, to go out and, and experience that with other people as well. We're absolutely thrilled to have members of the Oxford vaccine team, as well as a number of others uh, who've worked on coronavirus wards uh, delivering the readings. There's always, of course, a dichotomy which people readily bash on about, about the, the differences between science and religion, or indeed, um, perhaps even science and music. Um, but of course, it's been deeply fitting to bring those two worlds together in the way that we've been able to with uh, such strong representation from the Oxford vaccine team. Of course, we've suffered enormously um, with a tragic number of deaths, both in this country and, and many other countries around the world, um, with many families experiencing real suffering in a way that uh, they never really knew was possible and real anxiety. But also at the same time, people have suffered with their souls. The country is facing a very grave mental health crisis um, and loneliness, suicide, uh, and all of those awful things have been a part of life for far too many people, quite simply because we've missed out on those moments or occasions of communal bonding that might be epitomized in a church carol service. And so bringing both scientists who've delivered and worked so hard to ameliorate the conditions of millions of people, saving millions of people's lives, together alongside a group that I hope is in some way providing solace to the soul, I think it's an absolutely poignant thing to do and I'm delighted that uh, we've been able to uh, bring everyone together behind this cause.
the whole vaccine development program uh, that's happened over the course of the last 18 months has involved so many thousands of people just in making the vaccines, but there's been a huge community that have got together um, there for that part. But then, of course, we've all now participated in being part of a program to try to curb the pandemic. And that is something which I think this generation of people on the earth today uh, will take with them for the rest of their lives. This project has been a rather remarkable undertaking. It's, it's been touch and go at times as we've waited on progress of, of the vaccination campaign and of the subsequent release of restrictions. Uh, and to actually be together um, as one group uh, has represented a rather remarkable sense both of uh, release uh, of newfound freedom, but also a rediscovery of, of our friendships uh, and the sense of community which defines a lot of this choir. That sense of commensality which characterises all of our usual Christmases uh, has very much been present throughout this recording and I can think of no better way to re-energise everyone's sense of, of belonging after such a long time of being apart. I was in an orchestra as a child playing the cello and I've been involved in choirs as an adult. And I think uh, that togetherness, that uh, uh, being involved in those community groups of people and um, trying to make music um, really is something which many of us have missed during the pandemic. And I think it's something all of us uh, look back on and hope we can be getting together, whether that's through music and the arts or it's for other ways through sport, to actually be uh, meeting other people again um, in uh, the year ahead. One of the defining features of, of this year's ensemble is that we've really managed to go to the heart of what we want to do, which is engaging as many uh, young and up and coming musicians as we possibly can. And we've been able to do that really because of the very uh, extraordinary financial support we've received, which has really meant that we're able to deliver on our promise to not exclude uh, anyone because of their financial circumstance. And that is um, extremely important. And I think the choir is all the richer, all the more diverse. But of course, it also means that uh, a lot of young people are getting hopefully a very, very professional experience, which I hope will uh, form part of their musical memories for a long time to come and continue to ensure that they are involved, not just in the life of this choir, um, but in many others as they go forward.